I don't. I still don't understand how we're going to hide these stills from the school," said George, as he practiced walking on them. "You'll see," said Harold. He knew a few tricks of his own. Chapter Seventeen, Monday. On Monday morning, the boys woke up early, gathered their supplies, and headed to the school about fifteen minutes before the rest of the students started to arrive. George and Harold carried their stilts and supplies into the boys' restroom upstairs and placed them inside one of the empty stalls. Finally, the stall door closed. They closed the stall door and locked it. You were, if you were standing outside the stall, looking underneath the door, it appears. It appeared as if somebody was sitting down there t taking care of business. George and Harold knew that nobody would dare to go into the stall, so it was the safest place in the school to hide stuff. George is the one on this side. The students began arriving, in, and the day started pretty much like normal. Mr. Crop marched up and down the hallway, screaming and making children cry. Gipper and his creeps stole money and distributed wedgies to the kindergartners, and a general feeling of hopelessness and despair filled the morning air. At lunchtime, as usual, the downtrodden kindergartners sat at their table with no food at all. Mr. Crop stormed up to the angry table, stomped up to the table, and started getting angry. How come you kids never have any food at lunchtime, he shouted. Um, said one kid, we're on diets. Oh, said Mr. Crump. Well, he pulled his belt over, he pulled his belt over his giant stomach. Well, good, he said. It's important to stay fit and healthy like me. In the afternoon, George and Harold asked to be excused, to be excused so they could use the restroom. 